Yeah, hello, dear people. Here we are again with our series about um, different topics related to the famous uh, Dr. Buteyko and his breathing retraining. And today we want to discuss the Russian studies. What, what which Russian studies are there, and which are translated, and which topics do they um, investigate? It? Yeah, which health conditions are investigated? Yeah. We we were actually Soviet even Soviet studies because. Uh, I'm going to review studies which uh, kind of less known because you can find studies related to asthma uh, previously translated. But here I'm going to talk about study which was done in 1990. First, the first of oh, this type of studies was done in Kiev in Ukraine in the Central Hospital, Shevchenko Central Hospital, uh, on people with radiation disease. After the Chernobyl disaster, there were many people, of course, thousands of people who were affected. And there were people with uh, having various symptoms related to nervous system, related to digestion, blood pressure, and uh, we would take some medication. What we found that people with radiation disease, and the trial was done on 50 patients, 82% of them had considerable improvements in their blood parameters and cardiovascular parameters, blood pressure. They reduced their medication and they found that there were no side effects because it was totally natural because the idea of the Buteyko breathing technique is to improve uh, oxygen content in the body, to slow down our breathing closer to the medical norm because yeah. people with chronic health problems and that re relates also to radiation disease via chronic hyperventilators and when we breathe too much when we breathe too much, 99% of population, according to modern research, breathe about twice the norm established 100 years ago. So slowing down our breathing helps to recover for this group of people. And that was the result of this trial on 50 patients. Now, the next clinical <coughs> trial was conducted on people with HIV AIDS. And even though there were only seven young people with AIDS, which were taken for this trial, the results were really good because we managed to uh, eliminate the main symptoms. And that would be mood instability, having fears, having mm -hmm. digestive complaints from about three up to seven, nine days. So it was relatively fast, very quick oh. improvements. Okay. And we also know practically that if people with HIV AIDS achieve up to 60 seconds for the body oxygen test, if they achieve normal breathing parameters, then we would be able to have normal life quality. Mm. So the problems related to digestion, to immune function, cardiovascular, respiratory, hormonal and other systems, mm. and these complaints are going to disappear. So people would have normally, when we have uh, later stages of HIV with CP 10-15 seconds, and this is where we started at the beginning, people would have, of course, problems with emotional instability, irritability, panic attacks, yeah, sure. having chronic fatigue, yeah. insomnia, digestive complaints, and we found that virtually all the symptoms relatively easy to address with Buteyko technique, and later people would not need even medication that we take for HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good trial, in my view, best known trial, even though it was very small, mm -hmm. and it's a trial which, like, officially not translated, but you can find translation of this uh, clinical trial on my website, normalbriefing.com. Yeah. Now, the next trial was also conducted in 1991 in Ukraine, and it was done in, Ky uh, in Kyiv Scientific and Research Institute of Epidemiological and Infectious Diseases because it was done on people with hepatitis B and liver cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. So we took people with uh, 30 patients, about 20, 40 years old, so relatively young, and we had acute or chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver. So we applied the Buteyko technique and they found that uh, 28 out of 30 patients had remission of their symptoms and we also showed improvement in their blood test results. So we reported 93% success rate for hepatitis B and liver cirrhosis. And among us, Buteyko practitioners, it is also known that problems with uh, liver cirrhosis, for example, relatively easy to solve with briefing retraining. Yeah. Even though it's like very serious conditions and official medicine provide maybe medication, kind of symptomatic relief only. So it's possible to deal with this health problem in a like much more serious way by retraining briefing and achieving uh, really great results, not only for briefing, but together with briefing there comes many other benefits, yeah. which is for example, sleep, when, it, when it comes to addiction, like alcohol abuse, alcohol so addiction would be also, role in, in that's, yeah, that's also 
part of the problem, of course, because most of these patients and in, in Russia, it's like uh, most drinking more, country in the world. Main, yeah. Actually, I was shocked to find out like two, three, I think two, three years ago that average life expectancy in men in Russia, like somewhere around 53, 54 years, which is like as low as in Africa. And that's mostly because of excessive use of alcohol. So that's also yeah, helps people, of course, to have less addiction to alcohol. So that was, again, clinical trial on hepatitis B and liver thyroid from 1991. And in addition to that, there was a clinical trial done on cancer. And this cancer was published in uh, 2001 in oncology, oncology journal in Ukraine, like it's official oncology journal. Mm -hmm. And in this clinical trial, Dr. Pashchenko, who was also a student of Dr. Buteyka, so he was a medical doctor, of course. A direct uh, student. Uh, yes, yeah, he trained by Dr. Buteyka. So Dr. Pashchenko, uh, he, uh, he, he found, he applied the clinical, uh, the Buteyka technique on 120 patients with uh, initial stages of breast cancer, but it was initial stages of metastasis. So when the yeah. tumor from, uh, the, from the breast started to spread to adjacent lymph yeah. nodes, so it's early metastasis. Mm -hmm. But it's already at this stage, it's actually uh, quite Very dangerous, dangerous because yeah, the mortality already. rate, like yeah. statistically, if we look even in different countries, how we yeah. evaluate and how much would be like overall view, uh, is pretty high, usually in three or five years, up to 25% of people are going to die, even though we would apply surgery, surgical removal yeah. of tumors, because at this stage, like when it's already a uh, metastatic stage of uh, breast cancer, doctors generally advise to yeah. have surgery. Next one would be chemotherapy and radiation. So there are like sure. three techniques, which uh, officially has, of course, good clinical support that we help people to live longer. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why doctors advise, although there is a lot of criticism from like alternative medicine and other people saying that chemotherapy, surgery, like people feel horrible for weeks later, which is true. But statistically, we help to survive people. And that's the reason why doctors, generally oncologists, we would suggest people to have all these free modalities used by official medicine. Mm -hmm. In this clinical trial, all these 120 people still applied uh, again uh, surgery of tumors plus chemotherapy plus uh, radiation therapy so all these techniques were applied but half of people 60 of them in addition to these therapies mm -hmm. practice briefing exercise and there was a lot of practice because in average we practice somewhere about uh, between two and two and a half hours every day yeah. for three years that's a lot of practice you can imagine like meditation type reduced breathing exercise and what we found in three years the Control group, as we as it can be expected, had uh, mortality about 25 percent, yeah, as I mentioned so normal, before. Yeah, right. like something which would be normal. Sure. But in the group which practiced briefing exercises for this Buteyka group, the mortality was about five six percent only, like somewhere around like six times less. Yeah, five point five six which times is incredible. less, of which course. is uh, like if you take by numbers like 80% less mortality, which is huge in comparison with even best breast cancer drugs, yeah. like very expensive drugs exist these days, or in comparison with again chemotherapy radiation, because radiation therapy, because these techniques, they do reduce mortality, but reduction of mortality in some trials it may be 5%, 10%, in best it's 20%, yeah. so it's kind of little bit, uh, a little bit better survival yeah. in, in people. But in this Buteyka trial, the mortality was reduced by six times, and nearly, which is... It was a significant number of participants, so uh, very large number. very important for a valid study. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Plus additional effect, which we can kind of mention, important to mention here, uh, as Dr. Paschenko wrote in this trial, like the, you can find translation on normalbriefing.com, that he lost only two patients in his mm -hmm. Buteyka group, and these two patients, in addition to cancer, we had diabetes and heart disease. Mm -hmm. So it was a really complex situation when people have combined, very serious combined yeah. conditions. And we, he it wrote takes much longer this, or it's even impossible these to people, be treated with. Exactly. They were even not able to change their briefing and to improve ACP. So we started with uh, all these patients, started with CP about 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So means that they have very heavy breathing, about breathing rate 26, 30 breaths per minute, day and night, very yeah. fast breathing, very low CO2 level, body oxygen level results because of that around 10 seconds, which is very low, like corresponds to severely sick people. And 
those who practice breathing exercise, again, except those who die, we achieved up to 50, 60 seconds for the body oxygen test, which is very high results yeah, sure. by, because we measured CO2 in exhaled air in this trial. Mm -hmm. So we can evaluate the CP numbers at the end of the trial. Actually, most of them would achieve it in a few months, and later we just maintain, maintain the same level for the next three years. And of course, while these people are able to maintain the uh, normal briefing, the normal briefing yeah. parameters, we would be uh, we would be protected from cancer. Yeah. So it also a very good method of prevention of yeah. recurrence because recurrence is quite high as well because when of course cancer because tumors are cut, we, we can maybe genetically easily react. A bit genetically, yeah, but when people yeah. might maintain similar lifestyle, there is kind of it makes sense that uh, cancer. Uh, can, can reappear again in the same person. So it was really a fascinating trial that also actually became a topic of my book, Doctors Who Cure Cancer. And with recent discovery in ketogenic diet, yeah. it can be even more successful. And uh, one of my students, Misha Sakharov, who teaches Boteca Technique in Denmark, has really fascinating uh, results, uh, results with, with his additional students. ketogenic diet, which makes a lot of sense, of course, if you Applied, you, yeah, you because at, uh, the newest research kind of cancer. address cancer in two directions, mm -hmm. like not only uh, getting enough oxygen in cells, increasing level yeah. of oxygen by briefing retraining, but also by Starving the cancer. changing the diet exactly since it uh, kind of... Uh, cancer feeds on glucose, blood glucose actually, glucose which is present in all people, but when we eat glucose it even gets higher. Sure. So and that helps cancer to grow. Whereas ketone cells, if we get into state of ketosis and glucose is low, uh, we have ability to suppress many types of cancer cells. So that's the reason why it helps.